All right, good evening. <clears throat> I want to thank you for joining me for this Helping the Helpers lecture, um, number 25. It seems like we've done quite a few of them now. And um, tonight we're going to be speaking on zygation, hermetic seals, and chimerization. And I hope this thing is working. We're about to find out, I guess. Um, so, Father, I do pray and ask that you bless this time, that you would take and make it something that would glorify you and that people would come to salvation and freedom, importantly, freedom and salvation, Father. You said you'd go into the darkness and bring the light, <clears throat> that you would drop the chains off and lead those captives free. I pray and ask that you would do that tonight. In Christ Jesus' holy and precious name, I do pray. Amen. All right, we're going to talk about zyg zygotes and zygation. This is um, something that I think I'm the only person that teaches on it, that teaches on <clears throat> how to remove monarch mind control programming or set people free from long lineages of cults or cultic ties. And um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. What is zygation? Well, you start with a zygote. Um, a zygote is a term that is used in the medical field to, de to define a single cell. It, it's basically the fertilized egg. It's a single cell that is created when the female's egg and a male sperm cell combine. So it's a fertilized egg. Now, because the medical field likes to break everything into categories and spatial sequencing of growth, et cetera, et cetera, and development, they use different terminology. Uh, also, because they like to try to determine when it becomes an individual, or in other words, when it has the capacity for self-awareness, feeling, and knowledge, so that they can then determine whether or not it should be aborted. Um, I'm against abortion. It's murder in, in every way, shape, or form. And ironically, the hermetic magic seals that are placed into individuals count on that they they the whole thing is based upon killing off embryos but in the wet the womb <clears throat> so let's get into this in the earliest it's it's the first and earliest stage of development um one of the things most people don't understand is is that when the male sperm penetrates the female it sets off an actual process so that no other sperm is supposed to be able to get in but what happens is it takes about right up to about four days, <clears throat> and then it will split into two, and then those two into four. It goes into hyperdrive of cell production. <clears throat> but it has four days. I believe that is because there are four horns on the altar. Jesus Christ is the ark, four horns of the ark. I believe everything is symbolic of God and his authority. And... Um, I don't know who did the thumbs up. I can't see anybody there, but I'm glad you're here. So anyway, what happens then is it's the first and what they call the earliest stage. It's when the penetration happens, the acclimation and the fusionary process, the biometrics begin. And every bit of genetic information is in that now fused egg. It has all the information. Many people believe it not only carries the genetic code for the human, but it actually carries with it all the information of every person proceeding in that genetic line or who has donated to it. In essence, all the way back to the first human, which was the Adam. Um, when they discovered this, that they actually had memory. And, and one of the things that you've heard me speak about is precursoring. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be a long video. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as simple to understand as possible. But genetic precursoring is what we call development within the biometrics or the genetic makeup of a fused egg. It has both female or, or from the mother's side and father's side contributing patterns, but it would be their parents coming through them genetically fusing and everyone behind them. It's like a, a genetic neural network or link. So it contains the full set of chromosomes, 23 from the egg, 
23 from the sperm. This stage will last about four days. And that's when the rapid cell splitting stage begins. All right. When that happens, when it begins rapidly, it's called a blastocyst. Okay. Because the terminology describes how quickly it erupts and they consider it to be a sister of growth. So, or they will term it an embryo. I call it an infant because Jesus is the light that cometh into the world. He, he lighteth every man that cometh into the world, which means Jesus Christ gives life to that womb. He's the one that gives life to the sperm and to the egg and gives them the ability to fuse, create a brand new life. Something that has never existed before, but it carries all the genetic makeup of mankind and the information going all the way back to Adam. So they had the movie Altered States about that, except they showed man going back into being a caveman status, very primitive with only the primal or lower part of the brain. So we know that's false because man was created in God's image. Adam and Eve were fully created human beings. Now, they will define it, they say, because they want to define it for growth and spatial sequencing of growth and development. But it's actually because they want to use it for the definition that's used to make abortion legal or what we would call feral medicine. Feral medicine is medicine that doesn't care about the life of the people involved. It just has its own agenda. So there are, <clears throat> there are multiple ways that a zygote, so a zygote in simple terms is a fertilized egg, female egg from a male. But there are multiple types of zygotes. And here's where this gets into hermetic magic and creating a monarch mind control individual or a pure blood or a blue blood, a member of the Illuminati. They have had to go through these rituals, whether the secret societies from Egypt or whether it's from Tarzania. Um, they all have the same formula. And it is dependent upon zygation and chimerization. And it's done through the hermetic magic ritual. So I'm going to describe this a little bit to you. So let's get into twinning. The idea of twinning is essential in mind control programming. It's also essential in all cultic lines, okay, where the sins or spirit of the sins of the fathers is visited under the children. Now, in genetic precursoring, which means this individual, he, he goes through certain experiences in life, so it'll flip the genetic switches in his DNA and his RNA that he transmits to one another and the DNA he, he gives to the child. And so what's happened is over time, Adam had 100% use of everything. But now we have less than, they say, one-tenth of, of 1%. So many cursors or switches like a circuit breaker box have been flicked off that we've lost an incredible amount of ability. And um, longevity being one of them. So this is what's passed on into the egg. Now, there are many types of twins, and this is why twinning is important. Now, when I use the word twin, most people think of a guy would be sitting here, and I'd have somebody sitting right next to me looks just like me, or a girl that looks similar to me, and we would be twins. But I'm talking about internalized twins. I'm talking about those in the same body. This is what makes it a chimera. Now, the first type of twin you have is called a monozygotic twin. Okay, and it'll be for self-explanatory reasons. A monozygotic is when a single fertilized egg splits and separates into two separate embryos, or what they call blastocysts. Okay, growths. They're a living form. Those two, they split. One has become two. That's twins. They will have the same chromosomes. And this is why they will often look identical with very little difference in between them. They will not only have, but they will also have the same what we'd call heurism, or they'll have the same wave structure, which is very important, which is why many of them have telepathy, long distance, empathy, you know, hyper-emotional attachments that one can feel from the other. Okay? Now, they will start and have the same chromosomes and often look identical. 
and they will be identified as the same sex at birth. Okay, you'll have two males or two females. They may share an amniotic sac. Now, that's the sac and the placenta. It depends on when they separate. They separate early. They both get their own sac. They separate late. And by late, and we're talking here within the four-day period. Okay, so that's not a lot of time. Then they share the same ones. That means they're both in the same sac, sharing the same nourishment. Okay? This brings us to the second type. The second type of twins or twinning is called, di we get the word dizzy, dizzygotic twins. Dizzy or dizygotic twins. It's when two eggs get fertilized by two, by two sperm. So you have two different sperm, two different eggs. This produces two embryos. But unlike a monozygotic twin, which we just spoke about, the dizozygotic twin do not share the same genetic material. They are, in essence, a different person. They have a different soul. You see, in the first one, when we have a single cell, one egg, one sperm, and it splits into two, well, it's theoretically that there are two souls. In other words, the one soul has been split. In the book of James, it says a double suke, double-minded person, is un oh, hi, Gina, is unstable. This is for you, by the way, Gina. This, uh, this is the problem you're dealing with. So, in essence, that person's heart will be split and their thought process will be split. Two independents. And here's where you get the one side that's going to lean towards being very white and one side being very dark. Okay, we'll get into that. So, in diazo or, or dizygotic, di being two zygotic twins, this is when two eggs get fertilized by two sperm, producing two separate souls. And this is going to be important. So they do not share the same genetic material because they're formed from separate zygotes, fertilized eggs. They can be the same or different sexes at birth. And this is where they won't be identical. They won't even look alike many times. They'll have similarities because they have the same parents unless there's multiple parents involved. And we're going to get into that. Okay. They can be the same or different sexes and they will develop, important here, in separate placentas. This is the most common type of twinning. It makes up over 70% of twin pregnancies. Um, in my mom's family, twins run. And uh, there are several sets of twins. I'm, I'm thinking of my cousins right now, who I love dearly. They're a set of twins. All right? So we got monozygotic, dizygotic. Now here is the one most people are totally unaware of. It's called monoamniotic. A monoamniotic twins. Interesting, we have a singular word that turns into a double. This is a specific, special type of identical twin. They will share the placenta. The, the I better define that. Um, a placenta is the fetal organ. It's the sac. It's it's made out of an incredible amount of protein and, and rich nutrient tissue. And it provides both oxygen and nutrients to the infant during pregnancy or the fertilized egg, fetus, whatever you want to call it. But I call it a child. Okay. So they will share the placenta and the amniotic sac. The amniotic sac is the fluid-filled sac surrounding the fetus in, or the child in utero. That's what they have to puncture when they want that water to break. So this is why they are called monochorionic. Monochorionic or monoamniotic. And in um, for the hip crowd, I guess, this generation of this, and they call them mono-mono twins. I don't get that one. Um, I guess because they're both independent, even though they're in the same placenta and amniotic. 
Now, this type of twin only occurs in one percent, one tenth of one percent of all pregnancies that are twin pregnancies. So 70% of twins and then one tenth of one percent. So that's how rare they are. Now, when you have a monoamniotic twin, there are a lot of problems. This is the person that has trouble carrying a baby. Okay, because one is the amniotic fluid levels can either be too high or too low. If you get one twin that's sucking up all the amniotic fluid and all the nourishment from the placenta, the other one becomes a dwarf and this one becomes big. You know, they had that movie um, with Arnold Schwarzenegger where they had like 10 different fathers and one mother donating eggs, but several other women had also dedicated, donated eggs. And they did it as an experiment and one became a genius and a blessing and a boon to society. The other became a dwarf criminal with all the negative aspects of society. Now, that's an exaggeration of this, um, but you get the idea. So what can happen is you get different rate of growth, rate of growth in the twins. <clears throat> but also you can get different stage development capability. One may not be able to talk. One has all the abilities. The other one may be trapped in the body somewhere. And they don't even know it exists because they share the same body. How can that happen? Well, we're going to talk about ingestation or zygation in a moment. <clears throat> so when they're both in there, they can also have what's called entanglement. If you've ever heard somebody say, I choked my sibling to death in the womb. My cord knotted or wrapped around them. That's what happens. <clears throat> knotted is when it goes around the other one's cord and tightens and literally slowly, slowly suffocates them to death to the point where the baby will kick and have convulsions for days, sometimes, uh, you know, five days, even a week. And you say, well, what happens to it? It's absorbed into the other twin. Now, this is very important. Let me finish teaching on this, and then I'll get into the chimerization part. They have to usually be born prematurely between the 34th and 37th week to survive. Otherwise, they will choke each, usually wrap, and, and one will kill the other. <clears throat> and if that happens, you'll give birth at that stage to a dead baby and a live baby. Okay? They can also have... <clears throat> what's called twin reversed arterial perfusion, trap. That's when one gets an underdeveloped heart and it has to rely on the other infant to pump the blood for both of them. Now, when they don't completely split, you'll see them as a Siamese. We're not talking Siamese here. Okay, we're talking two separate. And when they're only the size of a raisin, and the other one has to begin pumping the blood for the other one because he's literally choking the other one out. Or the heart hasn't developed because it's been not getting enough nutrition. It sets up <clears throat> the seedbed or makes, it basically sets up the perfect storm for, for gametization. <clears throat> There's one other problem that happens because of a lack of nutrition. <clears throat> In this mono a mono or twin, they call them also twin twin. Um, it's TTTS, twin twin transfusion syndrome. <clears throat> That's what the official call is, is when one is getting all the nutrition, the other is starving to death. Okay. It's at that point, the one infant that's being starved will have organ failure or not organs develop at all. And it can still live. Now, here's what we're going to get into. And here's what creates chimerization. Gametization creates chimerization. Now, when you think of a chimera, you think of the old lion with the dragon's wings and the serpent's tails and the goat head coming out the side and, um, you know, a, a bull's head on the front or five different mythical animals put together, five animals put together creating a mythical one. Well, this is what they've done in the occult. And... Um, it is the way that they can get <clears throat> several different people into one body. 
except the one that owns the body doesn't know the other ones exist. <laughs> they try, in a blue blood family, they will have five zygotes that are consumed. In a pure blood family, they will have seven or more. Now, let me describe chimerization, and I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. This is I'm going to try to go slow. Um, if you already know this stuff, let me know, and I'll pass over it um, because I don't want to be redundant or you know bore you guys or anything. But the first thing, there are several types of chimerization in human beings. There's even more in animals. Microchimerization occurs when a woman gets pregnant and she will absorb some of the cells from either the infant or the opposite. The, the infant absorbs some of the cells of the mother. Now, this can happen because of rupture, leakages, many different things, sometimes just from a thin wall. So what happens is the cells will travel into the mother, mother or the infant's bloodstream, and then they will go to different organs. And you say, well, what is the big deal? Well, that person's DNA now becomes a permanent part of the child's or the child's to the mother or both. And it does become both because in the occult, they pray and do rituals just for this to happen. So it's called a witch's web. It twins the mother to the children and the children to the mother and to every other embryo that's been ingested inside of them. So, yes, and I'm going to get into that. This is called microchimerism because it's on a minuscule amount. And you say, well, what's the big deal if just two cells or three cells break loose or up to eight? If it becomes up to eight, it becomes almost like a tumor and it'll form into a circle like a cyst. Otherwise, it's almost undetectable unless they go into a scrape and do a DNA check. Now, the second time of chimerism is artificially induced chimerism. <laughs> you say, really? Yes, it can be artificially induced. Now, how, now, we need to understand when it says artificial here, it doesn't mean it's fake. No. It means it's artificial because it's not yours. It's someone else's. And it's taken place and part of your body, like a piece of art or a picture. And now they look at you and they don't realize they're looking at two people. So artificially induced chimerism occurs very commonly through blood transfusions. Those people don't know that. If you have a mother that is pregnant and doesn't even know, she, even if she's in the early, especially if she's in the early stages, and she gets a blood transfusion, whoever donated the blood, it goes and becomes a part of the developing child. And if you come from cultic lines, they will do this on purpose. This is why like people like Adolf Hitler or other families, I won't name their names, insisted that their blood be given to pregnant women so that the developing fetuses would have their genetics and twining, twinning tied to them. It is very di diabolical. So it happens through blood transfusions. It also happens in a, an incredible way through um, stem cell mitigation. When, when they take and use stem cell transplant or even bone marrow transplant, it will absorb some, some of the, there's a percentage, it always is a percentage that will absorb into the other, other's bloodstream. Well, if you're pregnant, then that becomes a part of that individual. And this is why it's called chimerization you will have several sets of DNA. It has become so common today 
that in the medical field, they really don't even care about it. It had its moment, you know, 40 years ago when it was first becoming out and med students thought, wow, this is really cool, you know, first, second year students. So that's artificially. Um, one of the things that they will do is they try to treat blood before they give it in a transfusion with radiation so that it'll make the infant's developing body reject it. But they didn't used to do that, and they often still don't do that. Um, it's only if they pay, you know, are told to and pay for it, and somebody from the family, you know, donates it. Then you have twin chimerization. Now, this is where we need to take a little bit of note. Twin chimerization occurs when a pair of twins are conceived. But one of the infants, or they call it embryo. And I'm going to use the word embryo because it tells you the stage where it is. It's very tiny. Dies in the womb. The surviving infant will then absorb some or all. Because the mother will also absorb some or all of a deceased twin. Now, once again, if you're into the occult and you do a hermetic magic ritual, and I'm going to get into that, it makes a permanent anchor in the mother. It's called a backup. One into the child and one into the living cells that have become a part of you, of the other DNA of the, the infant that died. So the surviving embryo will have two sets of cells, its own and some of the twins. It will not be a full set of the twins. If it would, it would cause an imbalance. And um, you can go online and see people that are half black, half white, um, white checkered, black checkered with white over here. It's incredible when you can see that. Um, but what it would do is, is if you had a complete set from both, it would basically create a diabolical twin inside of the person. Because that twin would be the hidden twin. He would be taking a part of the body that he's joined to or been absorbed to. And so he would be on the opposite side, which would make an imbalance. So if it's a man, rather than being, you know, uh, logical black and white emotionally separated he'd be very emotionally attached and very sinister and cunning <laughs> yeah that's that's i guess you could find that humorous they call it a doppelganger or a double ganger in germany and um but it's the evil twin that lives inside when you go through master's psychology training if you work within the cognitive fields uh, they're going to make you take courses, and you're going to learn about twins that were living in the brain. And when they would take over while the person was asleep, they couldn't speak. They couldn't figure out how to do things. They were very primitive. Um, matter of fact, you get a lot of fainting hand syndrome where the person wakes up choking themselves to death, and it's because an undeveloped twin is on, on the other side. And they're tired of living in that body, and they want to kill themselves to get out of the of life. Okay, so that's twin chimerism. chimerism. The, the next one, the fourth one is tetragrammatic or tetragame. So tetra, the word game, game to chimerism. Uh, yeah, all this can be researched and easily. This is very common these days. Uh, knowledge, at least, if you get your degree in psychology, you should study it. So tet tetragrammatic chimerization is when a human chimera develops from two different sperm cells fertilizing two different egg cells. These two sets of cells will fuse together into one human embryo with cross-cell lines. This is tetragrammatic chimerism, and it falls in line with tetragrammatic hermetic magic rituals. Now, what do I mean? When, uh, well, I don't want to say the name of it, but let's just say there was a great deal of time and effort vested in the late 40s, early 50s, and that they found that they could fertilize eggs by several different people, have several different egg donors, put them in Petri dishes, nourishing them. And then when they would put them in the same Petri dish, they started with two and two, 
and they would injure one and then they would cut the nourishment off and let the other cell absorb the other one. So they did a forced tetragrammatic chimerism where they brought all four together. And um, only one lived at the end. And so in essence, you would have three twins inside of that person. Now the tetragrammatic magic comes in with the hermetic magic seals is when they pray and make a covenant to the God of death to seal that soul and keep it alive. That's why I described these types of chimerizations because the cells don't die. Now, they not only become a part of the person, but how can you tell if somebody's a chimera? Well, the first and most obvious with most people is eye color variation or changing eye color. Uh, I worked with a person this week who's had one green eye and one brown eye. I've worked with people whose eyes have turned to three different colors right in front of me and then changed colors and they would change. Yeah, that's right. They would change according to the neoprenophrine reaction to the switching or the disengagement, re-engagement of a personality. So what would happen is in the fifth layer of the brain, because we have the Fallon tubes and the pressurized systems that cross over, but back here, when the personality switches, it has a different it, it has a different set of frequencies and pressures. So it changes the color. The neopinephrines change the color of the eyes. Now, here's one of the things we're going to get into. That's one of the ways you can discover it. Um, secondly is what we call hyperpigmentation. Hyper is when you have an exaggeration or more of something. Okay? So... It'll be like wine blotches or blotches of skin that are much darker. Can also be hypopigmentation, like one side of their body. Uh, for instance, I've seen African Americans that one side of them was as black as night, and the other side was white. Why? Well, that's because that's the way that cell structure of the twin is. So one side's black, one side's white, and you can. You can Google this, and there's tons of examples of it. And so skin color variation will do it also. They have what is called the intersex, and that's when um, both male and female parts are present. And now this is when it's an infant. Um, they also call them hermaphrodites and other things like that. But it's, proper terminology is intersex. And... What happens is they'll have a mixture of both male and female parts to the point where it's unclear which one they are. Um, and since we're adults here, and this is not for children, uh, for instance, you can have a, a small vaginal opening with a clitoris that is actually a small penis, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so they're not completely defined. In other words, it's like a blurring of the lines that are set there. Of course, hermaphrodites, hermaphrodites, of course, are chimeras. Uh, that's an easy one to understand for twinning, but let's get on to this. The most, uh, the best way to do it is by testing, and they'll find more, two or more sets of DNA in the body, in its red blood cells. Um, lastly, you get into the autoimmune or human stress syndromes, um, anxiety, fibromyalgia, vasculitis, arthritic cancers, all happen when you have um, uh, chimerization. So here's a couple of real life examples because I figured somebody's going to want to want me to prove this. One is Karen Keegan. She was a, uh, of course, a female mother housewife. She needed a kidney transplant, so her family stepped up. Her husband and both she had two sons. They all submitted blood work and DNA to see whose would be the closest to give her a kidney. Well, none of them matched. She couldn't use her husband's. But her children, neither one of them matched. And so then they began doubting and, and said, these aren't your children. Um, well, they argued, and so they had to go in, and the scientists found that she had two complete sets of DNA in her body. Not partial, two complete. She was her own twin. One set was in her tissue, and then another completely different set of DNA was her blood. She was, in essence, real-life example, her own twin. That was published uh, to the medical community May 16, 2002. 
it is now so common that it will not even stir interest and they don't even put it in magazines. Um, another example is Lydia Fairchild. She had two complete sets of DNA that did not match any of her children. So that means there has to be at least three sets. Well, when they did her tissue and blood and then that of the DNA of the children, they found they didn't match. Well, they found that she had a third set of DNA in her cervix, just basically her whole upper vaginal area was a completely different DNA. There were three twins in that body, but that did not match her children. So what does that tell you? That tells you that there was four sets of DNA in one lady. Now, why did they do so much of an effort? Because one of they had a child go in and they needed blood and they took her blood and it wouldn't match. So they assumed that she had stolen the child and they were going to take her children because none of them matched. So that is when they got very investigative and they found that she had four sets of DNA. Um, I believe they intentionally suppressed this information because the whole basis of the Illuminati purebloods rests upon this hidden secret. Now, here's where it's coming in. In hermetic magic rituals, which go all the way back to ancient Babylon and Egypt, and also later on into Israel, what they do is they make vows. And they give the pledge. In order to join themselves to the God of this world, they would pledge themselves and their children and children's children till the end of time, all of their family and their life to the God of this world. Then they pledge and they do rituals to create what's called the temple of the God of this world. The first act of murder happens in the womb. They will do rituals and they will prepare the woman. And by the way, once this happens seven different times, it becomes natural and permanent in the woman and her family line. So they don't even know about the ritual, but it happens to them. And here's what it is. They will prepare the woman with spices and fertility drugs. And they will do rituals. It's called the Feast to the Beast. But the Feast to the Beast is not a one-day event. It happens over a week. Well, I'm talking about something different right now, Lego. Um, but we can get into blood types on something else. Uh, that's all really common knowledge, is, especially when you get into the rare blood types, um, specifically that of the gold gender that only uh, seven people in the world have but can be a match for everybody. So here's what they do is they will prepare the woman, and then what they have, and there's two ways that they do this. One is as they do it the natural way. The second way is they do it in the Petri dish, and then they implant it. And that's what they did in Project Artichoke, and then later on Project Monarch. Okay? It went all the way to M, uh, Project Ultra, but MK Ultra is automatically done. The natural way and the way it was done in the beginning is they would prepare the woman, and then they would summon the entities. And they would have um, a great deal of sex. And everybody would have sex with the woman. Not once, not twice. It would, it would happen many times over a several-day period. And I forgot to mention, but in the uh, twinning department there, when you had the two different eggs uh, fertilized by two different sperms, those can happen over a four-day period. 
So you can have her get pregnant by her husband the first day and maybe an, an extra sperm or two from a father or grandfather. And the next day, a person that's just visiting and being a part of the satanic ritual joins in. So you can have over a four-day period a dozen eggs that get fertilized. Don't say it ain't true. I've got a member of my family that had uh, 10 eggs got fertilized in them. They had six frozen and they are four frozen. They gave birth to six. So they will do this feast and there will be a sacrifice, by the way, um, human sacrifices, cannibalization, blood drinking, and the men will be possessed by the spirits of Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, Belial, Molech. Each one of the baffled men will take a turn. And then you'll have Lucifer on the fifth day. And so what happens is multiple eggs get fertilized by multiple different men. Now, if they do it um, with the in vitro fertilization, in other words, by doing it in Petri dishes and then planting it in the woman, they will also use what are called blood infusions. And they'll do a two-week cycling period of that so that the developing uh, embryo inside of her or infant, fetus, will then also take on the extra DNA that way. That's the way they do it in high tech. Now, they do rituals to seal each one of these eggs that zygotes that gets ingested by the other one. It's called zygation. Because they do a ritual to keep it alive, it is sealed in the body. So if you have a person and you can't figure out what's going on because they're truly wanting to be set free but then you also see the another part in them that doesn't want to be set free. It just likes doing witchcraft or evil. Pray and ask the Lord, Heavenly Father, are there any embryos inside of so-and-so? And if the Lord says yes, say, Heavenly Father, where are they located? Well, be surprised or not. Be prepared. Be prepared that there are going to be some in the brain, some in the colon. They will be throughout the body. Okay, there may be three in the heart. That's why you might say, why do I keep having to go and break seals on the heart? And every time they're still there. Well, because they're not that person's seals. Pray, Heavenly Father, is there an embryo or a twin inside of this body sharing this heart? Then you have to realize that twin may be twinned because of its high level cult. It is. Each one of those twins, and there will be at least four, at least four, will have a twin in it. So you end up with one out of eight, which leaves seven. One egg, one twin for each member of the unholy spirits that make up the Baphomet. Molech, Lucifer, Satan, Ashtaroth, Belial, Beelzebub the devil. That's called the seven unholy spirits of Lucifer. Each one gets its own embryo. And imagine that you're the person that controls the body and you have no idea that your twins are living in you. Uh, there was an episode on House where a man came in, he had all the signs of cancer, but they could not find the cancer in him. Finally, 15 minutes before the end, House comes up with the amazing... He runs, he checks him, he finds it behind his right knee, and it's his twin. He never died, but his twin had cancer. How about if you're a psychology major? In your fifth year of psychology, you're going to study lesioning in the brain, but also you're going to study zygation. House was brilliant. And in zygation, they had a case of a man in Vietnam who, when they went to change his post in the morning, he wasn't there. They'd seen a trail. They followed it. They found 14 Viet, Viet Cong ripped apart and beaten to pieces. Him leaning against a tree with broken pieces of his gun in his hand. They woke him up. He's covered in blood. 
he had no idea how he got there or what had happened. Well, he was a loose cannon now. They sent him back to the United States. When they tested, they found his twin was living in the opposite side of his brain. His twin could not speak, did not know how to fire a gun, but protected that body. And when the Vietnamese came creeping in, it woke up, took the gun and began, because he fell asleep and beat them to death, but then went after the rest of them and killed them all. That's that you, it's all documented. So here's what they do. So you need to pray and you're going to have to sever that twin, but it's also going to be twinned with the mother. And she's going to be twinned with the other children. And this is what creates a witch's web because she's twinned to her mother. And this is why after seven generations, it automatically happens. And it ties you to the sins of everyone before you. And guess what? You've already committed seven murders because you've ingested every one of those eggs inside of you. So you have to lead the person in a prayer. And you pray for all time and eternity to every ancestor, relative, or person that has been joined to them. And every egg, joined to every egg, And then pray and ask God to forgive those who did this, to forgive them for, for murdering their siblings, and to break the seals, to take away the pledge and renounce the oath and destroy the Shabua Sheba, the oath pledge that brings the eternal curse. To break those seals, burn the contracts and the covenants, and then to bring the the cut the eggs open, burning them with holy fire, and taking the souls and human essence out to the true heaven where he lives and giving them their own body, because all children belong to the Lord. And in essence, they are not adults. They have been trapped in that embryo, and mentally they have simply been given over to demonic spirits. Demonic spirits that have Either the mind, the will, the intellect, the body, the heart, the soul, the spirit, the emotions, or the ability for reason. Those are the nine parts. When you put them together, it creates the ten. The ten gods of Egypt, up and down. So, I just worked with an individual last week, a male. I said, Heavenly Father, are there any embryos in there? Yes. So I said, bring them all to where this one is. It was in the colon. He said, there are 15. That's good. So you take 15, and then you add, because that would be 5, 5, and 5. And you add Satan, Belial, or Beelzebub, and Ashtaroth, and you've got the unholy trinity, 6, 6, Six. He was a pure blood. His lineage has been doing this for well over ten generations. So we prayed, broke the seals, had the Lord remove those souls out of him to give him all of the heart, mind, will, emotions, intellect. Um, so here is the key to the monarch mind control and all pure blood family lines. They have their twins inside of them, and they're attached spiritually and genetically to their parents, their parents, and it just keeps going. All right. Did, did you understand this lecture? It's called a hermetic magic seal when it seals it in there, like a genie in a bottle. Sometimes you will find a jewel that will have human essence, blood. There always has to be the sacrifice that gave the seal. Okay, sorry, Lego. Um, I tried to make it as easy as I could. All right. So the key is, is in breaking those seals and getting rid of those, uh, having the Lord remove the other souls. 
human essence and genetic DNA. I also ask him to pray to burn up all their cells and DNA in that person and just to make them a single soul in Christ Jesus. All right, Father, I do pray and ask that you make this easy to understand and that you bless it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, Lord bless you all, and I will see you again in Christ's love.